In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to go over all of my favorite software settings in the Cam Engine software for the PW513, otherwise known as the AverMedia Cam 513. There's a ton of built-in settings in the software, and this tutorial assumes that you already have the camera mounted, you already have it plugged in, you already have the drivers and the firmware installed, and you have successfully installed the Cam Engine software on your computer. If you have not already done these things, do not worry. Link in the description below to the playlist where I detail how to do all of those things. It's quite detailed to get to this step. And if you don't already own the camera, I recommend buying it. Link in the description below because this camera has a 94 degree angle lens, 4K video, and the highest quality webcam I have ever used. I use it for all of my consulting calls. And that's why I'm doing this tutorial series on it. AverMedia does not pay me to say that. Great. So when you land on the Cam Engine software, which is what you see here, there is a scalable preview window over here where you can see the image in real time. You can scale this up. I recommend making it bigger to work with your image today. And then you're gonna see all of your settings that you need to work with here in the settings section. The first stop we're gonna go to is the gear cog actually up here in the top. This gear cog has some critical settings that I cannot believe they default to what they default to, okay? So video quality defaults to high fluency. This is for low processor computers. Turn it up to high quality. You will immediately see the difference in the preview window. The quality will go up. If you have a slower computer, keep it on high fluency. If you have a faster computer, put it on high quality. Just jacks up that quality. None of the other settings here matter. Hit close. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is frame up your shot properly. Now, as you can see, my shot I'm using right over here, there's a little bit too much room below me. You generally want to have a shot with your sternum at the bottom of the shot, and you wanna have just a little bit of room between your head and the top of the shot. But as you can see, there's a bunch of room above and below me. So what do I do to fix this? What I can do is punch it in using the zoom functionality built into the software here. It starts at times one zoom, and we can increase the zoom a little bit, and the camera is so high quality when I punch, punch, punch it in like that, it maintains the quality, now the shot is proper. Where my sternum is at the bottom of the shot down here, and at the top of the shot, I've got a little bit of room above my head right there. Sweet, frame your shot first. Next, with the default settings here on video, you might look a little oversaturated and a little too bright. That's the way it is in my opinion. Depending on your lighting setting, you do your own settings. But I would recommend experimenting with turning the brightness down from a 10 to a nine, and I would recommend turning the saturation down a notch or two. And when you do that, it's gonna make it so that you don't look yellow or brown, depending on your skin color, and it's gonna make you look a little bit more natural. Now you can see the stubble on my face. Now my hair looks actually blonde like it actually is in real life. Also, you wanna go ahead and experiment with the sharpness filter. Now, depending on your application, all of the settings you apply here will work on everything. OBS, XSplit, Skype, Zoom, anytime you use the camera. So be careful, but if you turn up the sharpness, it can make a significant impact on how high quality you look, especially on video calls. When I crank it up, I look super sharp right here and it doesn't look weird. That's just my opinion. You need to zoom in and really look at your face and see if you're satisfied with the way that you look. Make sense? Cool. There's other things you can do to make yourself look more natural in these shots. So what you're gonna do is click the filters tab right here. And this is probably some of the best features of the software. I recommend enabling it by clicking the enable button right here in the filters tab. And then you can see the, just the side-by-side -side shot of just enabling it on default. You click the compare button, see it right here, and it will show you side by side the way it looks with auto skin tone and smoothing versus not. When you click compare off on off on, it just looks better. <laughs> just straight up on the default settings. You When you move the skin tone to the right, it makes you have a whiter skin tone. And when you move it down, it makes you have a yellower, warmer skin tone. So cool to the right, warm to the left. You choose your skin tone based on your skin color and your lighting, okay? For white people, that have a lighter skin tone like me, you probably wanna use 50 or below. For people that have a darker skin tone, maybe you're African American, maybe you're Hispanic, you may wanna consider 50 and above, all depending on your lighting. Make sense? Awesome. 
There's also an effects tab and an EPTZ tab. You don't need to use these to have your camera look better and have your shot look better whenever you're using the software. There's one more stop, which is the advanced tab here. When you click that, it gives you even more settings on how to make your camera look better. If it is not already checked with your software, I recommend checking auto white balance and auto exposure. As you can see without auto on, it gets dark and it looks lower quality here in the preview of the shot. When you turn it on, it gets really solid and it looks good and it's great at adjusting to the way that you look. Same thing with auto white balance. Depending on your particular production situation, it's okay to leave these on all the time. You make your own decision. But wait, there's more. There's also a backlight compensator field here. When you have this off at zero, the sort of bright tones and the whites will be a little bit, little bit more muted. However, when you turn this up, it will pull out some of the brightness in your shot and it will make you pop a bit more. Great for video calls and great for webcams uh, and corner cams on gameplay live streams. Turn this up and down, it is your preference here. I like to crank it up because I like to look as bright and sharp as possible, and that's what it does for me. This is especially good for green screen applications if you're using this camera for a green screen. That is the best settings for this camera, the PW513. But once again, I want you to experiment. And if you want more gear recommendations, gear tutorial videos, follow me on Amazon. Link in the description below to check me out on Amazon. Follow me here because you'll be able to check out my original videos on Amazon, my idea lists on all of the best monitors, cameras, lighting, capture cards, you name it, all on Amazon, and come ask me questions anytime on Amazon. I live stream there, and you can jump in live chat and talk gear with me all day long right on Amazon. Thank you so much for watching, and enjoy your camera.